Joe James and in this video I'm going to show you how to write a binary search tree in Java. First we'll look at what methods we're going to need from the user's perspective. The user is going to want to instantiate a new binary search tree. He's going to want to be able to insert items into the binary search tree, find an item, and he's going to want to do a pre-order, post-order, and in-order traversal. He'll also want to delete items, but we're not going to do that in this video. Our user is going to interface with our tree class. We'll have a tree class that does all these functions. Insert and find are both going to take an integer. And then our tree class will interact with an inner node class to execute these functions. So let's review how the binary search tree insert function works. We always start at the root, and we always insert the item as a leaf. So if we want to insert 12 into this tree, our first comparison is 12 less than 15. It is. Our next comparison is 12 less than 8. No, it's not. It's greater than 8. So we insert 12 as 8's right child. And for uncertain find functions, we're going to want a return value to confirm whether or not the item was inserted. So successfully insert will return true, and if it's not inserted, will return false. Why would an item not be inserted? Well, a binary search tree does not contain duplicates, so if you're trying to insert an item that's already in the tree, we're going to return false and not insert it. We will start with our tree class, and the tree class will have a root node. And then inside the tree class, we're going to have a private class for node. Our first method will be an insert method. So the insert method takes an integer. Before we insert, we'll first check if the root is null. In other words, it's a brand new tree that's empty. And if it is, then we simply create a new node uh, using the value that we're passed in, and we assign that to root and return true because we successfully inserted that value. If not, then we're going to call a recursive insert function in the node class. Now let's do a little work in the node class. First let's define what a node is. We need a constructor for the node class so that we can pass in a value and it'll construct a new node. So we basically just want to assign that value to the data variable in a new node. Next, we want to write our recursive insert function. We'll create a new Boolean variable called added, and we'll initialize it to false. Now, our first check is to find out if the node passed in is null. And if it is, then we can simply assign the value to that node and return true, because we successfully inserted it. Now we need to decide which side, left or right child, to look at. So if the value is left than the data of this node, then we look at the left child. If there is no left child, then we'll create a new left child node using the value we're inserting, and then we return true. Otherwise, we'll do a recursive insert call on the left child for the value. And if the value is greater than the current node, then we know we need to look at the right child. And if the right child node doesn't exist, then we'll just insert it into a new node and attach that to the right child. Otherwise, we'll do a recursive call to insert it into the right child. And lastly, we will return added. So to review our insert method, we start by setting a Boolean flag added to false. Our first comparison, we check if the node we're adding to, we're currently looking at, is null. If it is, then we can just add the value to that node and return true. And if it's not, then we check our value against the data of the current node to see whether we should descend on the left child or the right child. And if we descend on the left child, we're going to see if the left child node is null. If it is null, we can simply add the value to that node and return true. Otherwise, we'll do a recursive call on the left child, and the same on the right side. That does it for our insert function. Now let's jump back up to the tree class and add a find function. So like the insert function, the find function also accepts an integer value and returns a Boolean. We can start by checking if the root is null. And if the root is null, we'll return false immediately because we know that value doesn't exist in the tree. If it's not null, then we'll do a recursive call on the root node to find that value, which will send us down to the node class. So let's jump down and write that function now. In the node class, all our functions are going to be private. So we'll declare a Boolean variable called found, and we'll initialize it to false. First, we'll check if the node we're currently at is null. And if it is, then we return false because we know the value hasn't been found yet. And if it's not null, then we continue to traverse down the left or right child. 
Next, we want to check if the value is equal to the data value of the current node. And if so, then it's re returned true because we found it, what we're looking for. If the value we're looking for is less than the data of the current node and the left child is not null, then we want to do a recursive call for the left child. And if the value we're looking for is greater than the data of the current node and the right child is not null, then we do a recursive find on the right child. And lastly, we return found. So that does it for our find method. Now let's jump back up to our tree class and do some traversal methods. Let's start with the pre-order traversal. First, we have to check if the root is null. If it is null, we don't want to execute the traversal function because it'll give us an error. We're only going to do the traversal if the root is not null. Just so we know what traversal we're doing, we'll print out the word pre-order, and then we'll call the traversal function in the node class. And the code for post-order and in-order traversal is almost identical, so let's just copy and paste this, and then make some edits. Now we'll jump down to the bottom of our node class and write the functions that actually do the work. Again, these are going to be private. We'll start by making sure the node is not null, and then if it's not, we'll print out its data value. And then if the left child is not null, we'll recursively call the preorder method on the left child. And if the right child is not null, we'll recursively call the preorder method on the right child. That does it for the pre-order method. Now we can copy and paste this method and make some edits to it for the post-order and in-order traversals. Then we need to move the print statement to the very end for the post-order. And the in-order. And for the in-order, the print statement goes in the middle. So here's a look at our final binary search tree code in Java. We start out with our tree class with the root node variable. We have an insert method, we have a find method, both of which take an integer value and return a boolean. Then we have pre-order, post-order, and in-order traversal methods. These are all public methods that the users can access. Then we have a private inner class node. Each node has a private left child node and a right child node and a data value integer. We have a simple constructor for our node class that simply takes a value and assigns it to the data. We have a recursive insert function that takes an integer value and returns true or false. And then we have a recursive find function that takes an integer value and returns true or false. And we have private pre-order, post-order, and in-order traversals. These are all private methods because they're only called by the tree class. That wraps up our video on Java binary search trees. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.